Hey folks, BQ here. Something new that we're going to be doing on the channel each week when Ro and Adam review impacts, they're also going to be reviewing some of TNA's history. It could be classic content or something controversial. And with uh, today being the seven year anniversary of Victory Road with the famed match between Sting and Jeff Hardy. That's what they're going to be talking about. Here's a disclaimer on this. This was recorded before the Jeff Hardy DWI incident. So you're going to hear him praise Jeff Hardy for getting his life together. But, um, you know, this just so happened to, uh, you know, <laughs> just so happened to be the content they chose. Had nothing to do with what happened with Jeff this past week. But hope you enjoy it and look forward to giving you more like this on the channel later. Hello, welcome back to the Impact Lounge. I'm your host, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Ro, and we're doing a bit of a special show today. Um, we're going to be doing a bit more content for the channel as the weeks go on, and one of the features that we're going to be doing, I was going to say regularly, we're going to try and do at least one of these once a week, those kind of things. We're going to be looking back at important moments in uh, TNA or Impact's history, and just have a, a look back at them, what we think about them now, and uh, really just, uh, I suppose, to, to highlight to maybe some of your newer viewers to Impact but some really special moments, both good and bad, we might add. We're not always going to look at uh, just the rosy stuff. So before I introduce Ro, uh, this is a new feature. As is such, we haven't got a name for this. Uh, so if any of you are listening, think, do you know what? That would be a great name for the flashback show or whatever you want to call it. Let us know in the comments. We thrive on getting comments from you and we want to hear what you think of this show as well as obviously what the content is about it. So hit subscribe. We're trying to get to 4,000 before the pay-per-view. Um, and yeah, just keep listening and keep tuning in each week. So Ro, how are you today and what are we going to talk about? I'm good. I'm looking back and uh, this is going to bring me back, man, to this this match, man. It's crazy how it, how it went down. So I'm looking forward to getting your thoughts as well as sharing my own. Okay, so uh, let's try and give our listeners a, flu a few clues uh, before... Um, we just dive into it. Let, let's not spoil it all in one go. So we are going back. It must be, was it seven years now? Something like that. Seven years since this show aired. It was a pay-per-view match featuring a TNA Hall of Famer uh, and also now a WWE Hall of Famer, I think, in the coming weeks, uh, if he isn't already. Um, it also featured some people, well, basically all the people in this are no longer with Impact. Uh, and it was one of the most infamous low points, I would say, in the TNA programming. If a little bit unjust, but it was infamous. I'm, of course, talking about Victory Road 2011, where Sting, in the main event, took on Jeff Hardy. Um, and the reason for those who are aware of this, uh, obviously, this event, the reason why it was infamous is that, let's just say Jeff wasn't at his peak performance um do you want to give us a bit more details of of what i'm talking about there bro yeah he just when he had came out um he just he, he didn't look like himself i mean we all know you know during that time with jeff hardy's character you know he's always kind of um i don't know what's the word i want to i guess you know real charismatic you know dancing to the to the uh down the ramp but he just didn't seem like himself and then I think they there was something backstage where they figured this out and um you know which led to Bischoff coming out. Yeah, Bischoff was with the company during this time. So but uh they and he declared it a no DQ and uh the match started, Sting hits the Scorpion Death Drop and then one, two, three. And, you know, as a fan, you know, who watches on pay review is like, what the hell? But I think and I recommend people to go back and watch and then you'll see why they had to do what they had to do. Like he literally came out there and, you know, intoxicated, you know, whether it was alcohol or drugs. And it was just a bad look for the company, you know, and it's one of the low points by far. Yeah. So, so just to, to put a bit more flesh on that. Yeah. So, so effectively Hardy came out. Uh, I think he came out first, didn't he? And he was at ringside and um, then Sting came out, who was the current champion. And he came down to the ring. It was all very, very dark when it was going on. But, but as you said, Jeff, I think Jeff even he stumbled on his way down the ramp. I think he nearly fell over to me for memory uh, as he was walking down the ramp, which is maybe a sign of the things to come. So anyway, so he was at, at, at uh, the ringside around the, uh, just at ringside, not actually in the ring at the point when Sting was holding up his, his championship belts. But I think the referee was Earl, Heb uh, was it Earl? Um, what's the brother's name? Brian. Brian, I think it was Brian Hebner. Um, 
could see that Jeff was absolutely in no state. And if you go back and watch the video, as Sting's holding up his title belts, you'll see Brian Hebner hold up the X symbol above his head, uh, which usually means that something's gone wrong in a match. So if you ever see that in a match, if someone's taken a nasty bump or something like that, then the ref checks on them and they hold up an X, that usually means look, we need to do something here. Uh, and, and if you watch back this video, you'll see that Brian Hebner does indeed hold up the X, sim, you know, crossed arms uh, above his head before the match actually starts, which is incredible. Uh, I, I can't ever remember anything like this happening before a punch is thrown. But anyway, this, this is what happens. So um, the match is about to start and uh, Jeff Hardy is being a complete douche <laughs> in that he's just wasting time, stumbling around the edge, pretending to throw his shirt into the audience, really kind of riding them up, those kind of things. And Sting, man, does he look pissed, does he? Does he not? I mean, he looks furious, absolutely furious. And just before anything can happen, suddenly, as you say, Bischoff walks down to the ring and he gets in and uh, he holds his hand out to, to Jeff Hardy and um, he pulls him in and he, and he has a word in his ear. I, d I don't know if you remember this, Ro, uh, but obviously he's telling him something's changing at this point you know you can't hear what's happening because it's all off mic but basically bischoff pulls in hardy uh during the handshake and, and says something to him either this match is going short you screwed up <laughs> i don't know what he said but he said something he then gets on the mic and says comes up with this cock and bull story which you can tell wasn't rehearsed because it was a real i don't know he was pretty rambling in his, his explanation of why this is now suddenly a no DQ match. Uh, I think personally, he was trying to buy himself time to think, shit, we need to do something here. We don't know what it is. And my first reaction to this, and, and maybe you, you will disagree, but I think the reason why they called this no DQ match was that they were going to let this match continue and have a load of interference to try and hide the fact that Jeff Hardy was in no state to perform. So I think that was the original plan that he came down and he made it a no DQ match because there's no other reason to make that a no DQ match other than to possibly get some interference and, and help hide the fact that, you know, all is not well in the state of Denmark at this point. So then he, he kind of is trying to shake the hand of, of Sting, who is absolutely and I think genuinely furious at this point that they've let Hardy out into the ring in this state. And he's there trying to shake the hand of, of Sting. And uh, I, I don't know how much of this was planned or not, but basically Sting sucker punches him. And I'm not saying that it was a real sucker punch or, or whatever, or whether it was planned, but because I think this was all done on the fly, I don't think it was planned, but that's how the kind of segment ended before the match started. Uh, at this point, as you said, uh, Sting backs him up into the ropes. You can see Jeff is kind of covering up. It, you know, he can't do a proper lockup even at this point uh, because he is so out of it and, and as I said um, we're not going to speculate whether it was drugs or drink uh, I think we almost probably know what it was um, and then within I think 30 seconds of the match starting uh, he hits the, the Death Valley driver sandbags him on top of him the ref does the quick three count and that's it it's all over and Jeff is going furious isn't he <laughs> he's like well he's kind of half baked <laughs> and also half what, 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 what's going on here? He, and, he, uh, he, didn't, he didn't. No, he didn't hit the. It wasn't the death valley. I know what you're talking about. He hit that. It was that reverse DDT. Oh yeah, the Scor scorpion scorpion death lock, wasn't it? That's what it's called. Uh, the though. drop. Yeah, he and he hit it so quick, man. And yeah, he was. You could tell the look on her face. It, it was pissed. And I mean, it was just one of those things. I think during that time, because the the problem, and even you could say some now with the company now, I think the the concern is always that you know, people would come to impact and think kind of less of them. And what I mean by that is they would do things where in the former company, they wouldn't think twice, you know, like, could you imagine on the flagship show coming up there intoxicate, man, they, you'd probably be blackballed because that's live, you know, and yeah. this was live. obviously this was live too, but I think that was the thing with this company. It was just like, you know, people come over here and, you know, can essentially just do whatever the hell they want to do and stuff. And it was just bad, a bad look to be on live television and having that. Absolutely. And I honestly, truly, genuinely believe that that match didn't end the way it was supposed to. I think Sting 
almost went into business for himself by finishing it up that quickly. So I think that the plan was we're going to have a load of interference, you know, let them go a couple of minutes, then people are going to start running down, etc. And I think Sting just thought, no, not having this. <laughs> I'm finishing it. And that's it. I'm out of dodge. And you could see when he was on the ramp, you know, where people were shouting, this is this is uh, ridiculous. This is stupid. And he was like, going, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, it, it is rubbish. Um, but fair play to Sting. He did his part and they got through it and Jeff went off to rehab and sorted his life out. And I, I suppose if, if any good came out of this is, is, is the way that Jeff bounced back and the fact that it's still talked about today, you know, and it was, uh, we talk about Victory Road. One of the other pay-per-views is called Turning Point, wasn't it, I think? And this genu this was a turning point for Jeff Hardy uh, in more ways than one, wasn't it? Um, but for any of you who haven't seen it, go back and watch it because it, it really is interesting. And I think this is one of the few times that the company just didn't know what to do. Uh, what do you think? Do you think they should have sent him out or, and done it the way they did it, or do you think they should have just put a different guy in the main event to, to challenge Sting? Uh, yeah, I, I would have liked for them to just put a different guy in. I mean, you could have done something where somebody runs out, attacks him, or you know, whatever the case may be, and then you just make make that match, or even make it a yeah, you know, a triple threat. Throw Jeff out of the ring and then just have them, you know, do do most of the the work in the ring. I thought just letting it continue, I, and I get it. They figured, uh, we'll just hurry it up. But this was your main event. I thought, you know, it had you could have got to get away with this. What it had it been like, you know, a middle match or you know the first match of the evening. But to have the pay per view end on this note, it was just it was kind of just terrible. But I mean, what could you do? And they were they were stuck in a bad place regardless. I mean, from the things I've read on it, I believe that he was okay during the day and it was he went missing a couple of hours before. And then when they found him, he was, you know, and this is all alleged, you know, I'm not saying this is fact, but, you know, there was stories that they found him in his trailer on his back, passed out, and, and they, they just basically pushed him down to the ring kind of thing. But, uh, you know, it does put them in a tough spot. You know, do you disappoint the fans who are there who have paid money, the people who have paid at home have to give them refunds? Do you actually try and get the guy out there and maybe let him prove himself that he's okay? Uh, it's a really tough spot. And, and, and I think, as I said, they did try their best to work their way out of the situation by changing it to a no DQ uh, and, and, and potentially have a load of interference. But Sting being the professional he was, he most probably could realise straight away this match, it needs to end before Jeff gets himself hurt or, more importantly, before Sting gets hurt himself. So, yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, don't, I'm going to ask you, actually, uh, bro, if you'd have been in the audience and you'd have been there, a, would you have been annoyed at the way it went down? Or would you have been more annoyed if, for example, Ken Anderson would have been suddenly thrown into the, the, the pay-per-view main event match with no real explanation? I don't I think know why I picked on Ken. <laughs> I think I would have more of an issue, the fact that they just left it like this. Because like, I think, you know, if I dial it back seven years ago, my seven, year old, <laughs> seven years ago self, looked at it like, what the hell's wrong? wrong? And... I mean, during that time, you know, when they would do stuff, you know, things like this, it's like, God, man, why are you, I, I kind of could see see why it gets the criticism it does, but I think I would have just been pissed because it's like, really, this is the, this is the main event. I would have preferred more, even if it wouldn't, I know you say Ken Anderson, even if they would have thrown some random guy out there, as crazy as it sounds, but say they throw some random guy out there and he beats Sting. You know, I'd be like, oh, whoa, because that's not something that you see coming. But to, to have this and even during that time, too, I was really kind of anti like if you were from the former company, I didn't want to see you being pushed, you know, in the main event. Mm -hmm. I want I preferred to see then the TNA guys getting that that rub. So I was already probably annoyed <laughs> when when I seen these two headlining. But, you know, to let alone to have that happen, you know, yeah, I would have been really annoyed and pissed. Yeah. Well, uh, listeners, let us know what you think. Your memories of this match, uh, we really want to hear what, you know, whether you think uh, they did the right thing, whether they were damned either way, and uh, what you would have done and how you would have reacted as a paying audience member at that time. Uh, we also want to hear your thoughts on what we should call this show, because it is going to be a semi-regular semi semi show that we're going to be trying to put together, where we're going to be looking at uh, other uh, issues like this, as well as some uh, fantastic matches. So the other thing we want to hear from you is other topics for us to review looking back over impacts long legacy i mean how's it got how long has it been going out 15 years something like that it uh, might be more more than well 16 now <laughs> yeah there's uh plenty of stuff for us to go back and review so yeah 
just drop us a note at the bottom. Make sure you hit subscribe. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Ro, catch you next week. All right. See you guys later.